Well, hey, friend, Andrew here. Welcome into the control room of my home studio. Today, I'm going to do a tour of my control room, so let's roll the intro. Well, welcome to episode two control room tour. Uh, before we jump into the tour, I just want to offer you a couple of free gifts just for watching this video today. Um, the first one is my home studio construction blueprint. So if you go to www.andrewpeachmusic.com forward slash studio dash blueprint, you can pick up my home studio construction blueprint. It's a 10 step uh, guide uh, for building a home studio. This is my second home studio now. So hopefully that'll be helpful to you. The second one is my studio outfitting guide uh, for home studios. So if you go to, again, www.andrewpeachmusic.com forward slash studio dash outfitting dash guide, you can get a copy of my outfitting guide. It's an eight step uh, process uh, that I've used now to outfit two studios with all the equipment you see behind me and how to stay on budget. So again, uh, hopefully one of those two is helpful to you. If it may be, then like I said, head on over to my website and grab those for free um, just for watching today. So uh, thankful to have you as a viewer for sure. So without further ado, let's jump into the control room tour. Okay, here we go with the control room overview 2021. Have a look in here. This room is 12 by 16. Starting off over here in the corner. You can see I've got some my phones and batteries, cameras, batteries for the lights. And I've got a cajon store there and my trouble, my trouble kit. That'll be the subject of another video. I've got a power bar, power strip on the wall there. Pretty handy, plugging everything in. Couple power amps down in the bottom, came out of the movie theater, I think. And what do we got in here? MIDI cables, USB drives, hard drives, track lights, more batteries and phones. And batteries um, desk so the desk you can see wraps all the way around almost so those are uh, it's custom are custom built the desk so that's melamine shelf board three-quarter shelf board and I've got some brackets there up and under I had these tabletops rescued from an old uh, job site that was closing, closing down or, or uh, renovating. Got some storage down here. What do we have? We got some cables in there, cleaning stuff and strings, and then one of miscellaneous stuff in there. Power cables, patch cables. It looks like mic packs, mic bags. Some more camera stuff, stationary stuff, books, book cue, candy. I always gotta have candy in the studio. Now we're at the mix position. So I've got the comfy chair, the rollerblade style wheels, we're getting around and nice and quiet. Uh, where do we start? We got a Studio Live 32 mixer, interface, whatever you want to call it. So it's got 32 channels, um, full of effects. It's got 16 mixes. So I'm using seven right now. I can track seven people at the one time. It's a headphone amp that I have. But I've got the capability for 16. 
see there, I've got, I can get the light out of the way. Uh, my channel's up as far as 28 are used, and I've got four spares. Uh, really good mixer. Um, anything I'm showing in this video, I'm not sponsored by anybody. At this point in time, anyway, if I was, I would tell you. Uh, but yeah, great product. Um, if you're used to analog consoles and you're moving to digital for the first time, this is a good one to start with. Um, all my, I've got my mics EQ'd going in to the board. I'll explain that when I go through the individual instruments, but everything is pre EQ'd. You can see as I'm going through the channels here or not if necessary. Uh, you can have gates, compressors, all that stuff is on board. As you can see there, so it's nice because you can clean the signal up. Uh, if you're using the same instrument all the time, you can clean the signal up going in uh, to your DAW, so um, that's always handy. Uh, studio monitors, a couple of KRK V6s. Perfect there. Uh, I'm using a Mac. It's a 2017 Mac Mini, and I've got it pretty much specced out whatever I could get at that time. I pretty much maxed everything out. Uh, a couple different ways and track pads uh, there. A couple hard drives. So this is my main hard drive, the Glyph Studio, four terabyte drive. So that's what I, when I'm recording, that's what I write to. And then I copy it off, and then I've got a bunch of these little Seagate backup drives that I use uh, for storage uh, purposes. Uh, talk back right there. Got an SM58 uh, for talk back. Uh, I'm running Studio One, uh, which is a Personas product, the same as the Studio Live um, for uh, tracking and mixing and mastering. And I'm using Final Cut for uh, video editing. And then I got my trusty humidimeter here. Helps me adjust the humidity in the room and the temperature. Keep that all under control. So that's basically mix station, I call it. Uh, let's see, Windows, let's go Windows next. So I've got three windows. One so I can see if there's anybody going to sneak up on me and scare me, try to scare me. <laughs> and then from the mix position, I can see the drummer there, bass station, and then electric is out there, and then acoustic and keys. Studio Live is connected to the rack down here. So I've got a Studio Live 24R rack mixer, which is basically the same as that bad boy, but in rack format. So I've got everything put in this case, and if I go anywhere, I can just unplug everything and just take it to a new venue and plug it back in. Um, that mixer has onboard DSP, um, basically can do everything like I said that the Studio Live 32 can do and I can mix from an iPad. So I've got I've got a router in there somewhere in the back so I can have my own network uh, when I go somewhere. There's an AVV switch. I'll go over the networking uh, in another video. I haven't seen anything with the monitoring but for monitoring I've got a HP 60 Personas again. So I've got six Oops. and then a power strip at the top and some cables so all if you can see back in there hard to see but that's where all the cables are hidden I come into the front so this essentially acts as my patch bay uh, some things I record in, in here and some things I track or record out in the live room and then I've got a recently acquired FM3 amp modeler. I'm still playing with that. Uh, using that for 
uh, electric as well as bass amp uh, simulation or recording. So that's really new to me. So I'll do a video on that, probably a review video at some point once I get a little more familiar with it. And I've got some storage, some CDs and some other things under there. Uh, up on top again, I've got a Shore ESM200 wireless monitoring system that I use. So that coupled with the six coming out of the HP60 gives me my seven uh, monitor for in-ears. And then I've got the power mixer there, the XR8600 from PV. And that runs for, I just got a, that's my main left and right from my Studio Live. And that's just for playback in the other room. I want to jam out, that's what I do. Got a TV there so you can watch whatever, sports, while I'm working away. Uh, Xbox, don't play that much anymore. Uh, internet box is here, so the internet comes in here. I think I've got 300 megabyte download, and I don't know what it is upload, but as fast as I can get, that's what I have. Quick uploads. Um, guitar repair gear is there, and the station there for doing that. I've got another computer station here. So whereas the mixing station is Mac, this one is PC, run off the Dell laptop there. I do design work from home, design and engineering work from home, so that's partially why I've got this set up, but some things run better on this system than what they do on the Mac, so I've got two different options. Yeah. Gotta have a couch. I didn't have a couch in my first control room, the first studio that I built in another house. And it's got a quilt on it that my mother made for me. Really comfy for Saturday or Sunday afternoon naps, watching golf or NASCAR or whatever. And filing cabinet and new printer, really useful. The door, as you can see, it's got glass. That's the only thing that's leaking sound, but it's kind of okay. We've got it pretty tight to the floor. Pretty straightforward. The flooring in here. I've got laminate wide plank flooring. And some uh, mat stand protective mats for rolling around on the chair. Walls are all soundproofed. Ceiling is soundproofed and tile. I've got the prime acoustic one by one panels in here, 12 inch by 12 inch. And I've got the Orlex Leonard based traps in the corners. You can see, and that's a hatch to go under the addition to the house. I need to get out there. And lighting. So I've got a track light there and a track light there. And pot lights are mainly the source of light. And then I've got the option to dim the pot lights. This is the way I usually have the room lit where I can turn off the pot lights. And that's not a bad option either. The track lights off. That's a possibility if you're tracking right there and you don't want to be a distraction. Or I can turn the pot lights back on and dim them as I want. Nice and bright for this video, but yeah. That's my control room. So let's uh, let's head back and wrap it up. Well, that was a tour of my control room. Hopefully that was helpful for you to see how I have things laid out here and organized and some of the equipment that I use in my home studio. Um, stay tuned for more exciting content. I'll be working through some of the 
a detailed review of some of the equipment out in my live room and the rigs that I have set up out there, uh, as well as more exciting things to come. So if you like this video, please subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.